I used to say, uh, Deer Deck Enterprises, our money's fearless, right? <laughs> and the concept was scared money doesn't make money. So our money's fearless. And it was so like, and it should have been Deer Deck Enterprises, our money is just dumb. I'm Tom Ward, and over the last couple of years, I've had the chance to sit down with some of the biggest celebrities and influencers in the world. What I've always found most fascinating is the stories of the businesses that they've built behind the scenes. On this show, you'll get an inside look of what it takes to build a successful business from some of the biggest celebrities, business people, and up and coming entrepreneurs in the world. This is The Tom Ward Show. Welcome to The Tom Ward Show. It's time to level up. We're sitting here with the legend, Rob Deerdeck. Rob, this is going to be for Forbes. So originally I was interested in you because I was a fan of Robin Big and the TV shows. I knew you were a successful entrepreneur. But then when I started doing homework on this, I mean, we're going to talk about business because it is, you know, we got to write an article about this. But I was more impressed with your philosophy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm listening to interviews and you're talking about tracking every minute of your day. Bam, I got Trello. I'm tracking my time. You're mentioning this book, start at the end with, you know, start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. Boom, buying that on Amazon. You're talking about putting systems in place. You know, systems are, are key. So I'm brainstorming systems today. I'm like, I like what this guy's about. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, man. Yeah, I love it. Look, you know, if you lead yourself to a highly optimized state, it's where joy exists, you know. And you can only do that by living with deep intention. And, you know, we don't realize that we actually are like living machines that have all these systems that integrate together, that then integrate into the world that make up our entire existence. And if we design them with intention, we can guide them to live any life we want. You know? Is that like when I was kind of going through all your content, that seemed to be like your philosophy. Is that what it is? It's basically like, hey, we're machines. And the beauty is we can program ourselves however we want to live an optimal life. Is that kind of how you would sum up yeah, what I, you're all about? Yeah, I think that's it in, in, in a super simple way. And, and, and I think a lot of times like that seems too rigid. Right. And it's like, oh, that feels really difficult. And discipline is so hard and and design, automate, optimize. Oh, it just sounds so <laughs> sounds difficult, you know, yeah. but but it's this much more beautiful thing where it is like controlled evolution and, and living life with complete intention that eventually becomes easier and more effortless to experience. And then you're just incrementally making it better rather than continually starting over or constantly trying to find time or going from one thing to the next or hoping the one thing that you do is the one thing that changes your life rather than having complete uh, harmony in your entire life and then sort of expanding in a systematic way towards the ideal version of yourself on an ongoing basis you know you said and i think i'm guilty of this i think a lot of people are you were addicted to like what's next mm -hmm. like if i just get this job or i just get this brand deal or if i just get this new show i'm mm -hmm. going to be happy i'm going to be where i need to be if i just get in this relationship relationship, whatever. Yeah. It never really works out like that. I mean, were you kind of caught up in that too? Like just constant movement, constant motion, what's next? Yeah. And, and it's, it's funny when you think about it, it's, it's a hard thing to escape because you, you look at your current circumstances and it's hard to step back and be like, oh, what I actually have to do <laughs> is change all of it in order to, to, begin to build from a place of balance and harmony when you think like, oh, no, I got to focus on just, you know, trying to get this new job or trying to build this company or this next big thing that's going to be the reason that I can then go and become balanced and become happy and all these things. It's kind of counterintuitive. And it wasn't like I discovered it, you know, in my 20s. I discovered it like right before I turned 40. You know, so I had just, you know, gone two decades of just doing bigger and bigger things, trying harder and harder, thinking like, oh, now I have a TV show. That's going to be it. Yeah. OK, I don't like this TV show. I'm going to do a TV show like that. This is going to be it. Then it's like, oh, no, that this is way too hard. I, if I do a show like this, this will be it. No, I want to start another company. No, I want to start a professional skateboarding league. If I'm like build this giant league, that's going to be it. I just went from thing to thing to thing. And it just. But it's, wildly successful at the same time. And that's the that's the thing about it is from the outside looking in, yeah. it's like it's like, yes, you created a ton of things and had great success, but the cost of it was I just wasn't happy. It was the epitome of like, man, you're doing all these things and creating all these things and having seemingly incredible success. And it 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 
had its highs, but it came with its lows. And I finally realized like, you just can't d keep doing this. You want to get to a place where you are just in a continuous state of high and are never low again. And, and that's really uh, where the beginning of the philosophy started. And that idea of start at the end in mind of like, you know, decide what would be an amazing life and what are all the things that go into that, then build it backwards of the strategy that you're going to do to eventually realize it. Now, I mean, this is a major kind of mind meld life shift moment. Was there like a rock bottom? I mean, people don't kind of, you know, take all this stuff on and, and, do a complete 180 like that unless something happened. I mean, was there like a rock bottom moment or was there one event that kind of made you rethink everything? Yeah, you know, I I, I don't, I, you know, I called it a rock bottom, you know, in, in the sense that it, it, I had finally had enough. And it was, you know, I had been going through all of the years of, of continually building businesses and different ideas and new TV shows and all this stuff. And, and I'm... I wasn't creating the scale of the success that I thought I was capable of. What do you mean? You know, you know how you, I kept putting a vision of like, I should be having hundred million dollar companies and big, I should have, I should have made all this money by now, but instead I keep building businesses, investing my own money and keep ending back at even. Right. I literally have no money saved and and I just uh, continue to create new ideas, self-funded. And then I was introduced to an investment banker who was like, hey, you could raise money for your skateboarding league. And he had said, hey, your skateboarding league is worth 30 million dollars. Okay. And I had self-funded it, completely created it. And it did seven million dollars in revenue and was profitable. Yeah. I was like, how on earth? It made a hundred grand last year. How could it be worth thirty million dollars? Did you not even I had understand no, how to value and companies? I, I look. I thought an investment banker was somebody that worked with high net worth individuals at like a Bank of America. I didn't even know the construct of any the like venture capital, private equity funds. I had I had never taken a dime of investment in anything I had ever done in my entire life. Wow. I was thirty eight years old. I wasn't like 27. I wasn't, I was like deep, deep into it. And I, at, after all those years of that success, I was still dead even. I hadn't, I How kept in- How that possible? Because I didn't understand money. Yeah. I didn't understand money. And I kept just thinking, you know, I, I used to say, uh, Deer Deck Enterprises are money's fearless. Right. And the concept was scared money doesn't make money. So our money's fearless. And it was so like, and it should have been Deer Deck Enterprises. Our money is just dumb. You know what I mean? And I, I was always brand marketing and you're a guru. Right? Yeah, like yeah. it was always like you build the right brand, you market it. That's how you find success. I didn't, I never, I was uneducated. So I never actually learned business. So when you think about the complexity of of building a business through a brand and product lens, that's only half of ever creating a successful business. And I I had never learned the operational and the financial side, so I was completely blind to that. It was just keep willing your way to making more money, and one of these like willed projects is going to be so big that you don't have to worry about not understanding money or operations. And There's a ton of creatives who have run businesses in the ground. I just read the saw this documentary on the house of Gucci yeah. and like the grandson of the founder was this like big creative guy and we're going to stop producing all this stuff and we're going to go real high end and everything. And they cut off all the revenue and they were going bankrupt. Yeah. So they had to kick him out. They're like, this guy does not know he's not capable of running a company. Yeah. And, and again, it's for me, as I've grown and evolved over the last decade, it's it's instrumental when I look at someone that I partner with that they see a business holistically. Right. Because it all integrates together to make up a great business. It's brand, it's product, it's operations, it's marketing, it's sales, and it's the management finances and the management team that runs it all together. And you need someone that has a visionary idea, but has general knowledge in those core capabilities of business so that they're making strategic decisions, not just based on what they think is a great idea, but what is great for the business. Right. And I think that's really part of my evolution and and really what allowed me to move forward and have great success in the venture side of business but make no mistake 
back then I didn't even know what any of that meant. You know, and I was offered a 360 deal from a private equity firm out here. And that 360 deal for me and was this idea that like finally the really smart people see that I've got the potential to be this super successful uh, multi-billionaire like marketing brand guru guy. They're going to help me become the success that I know I can be. Was that like the validation that you were seeking? Like, hey, the grownups are paying attention to me. You know, it, it's it's a good way to describe it, right? Because I don't know what I was seeking. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I, because I was, I still hadn't like, I didn't understand how it all worked well enough. I knew it through my narrow lens that I continued to stay focused on. I didn't look wider and think of all the places or things that I needed to learn and define what it was that I needed to achieve. I just kept going, going. So even when they, when they, when they said, Hey, you got it. It felt like, Oh, I do got it. You're right. I knew, I knew, I it. knew it. I knew it. Like, and then, man, I can't even begin to tell you the depth of devastation when they came in to then do the diligence on me because it was a 360 deal of all the companies that I owned. Okay. Then it was all of the entities, how I ran all of my finances and all of my personal finances. So if people don't know what a 360 deal is, basically they're going to get half of everything you do. Right. Is that so, basically so they're going to invest in just rob the business of Rob Deerdeck yep. and get half of everything that I do for the rest. Whether of my it's life. a brand deal you signed or a company you're creating, that's it. Half everything. That's it. Okay. So it's like in the in the in the bet is like, hey, look, he makes a ton of money from his brand deals. Yes, he, he owns a ton of different companies that he started. He has a ton of influence. He has media. We could build uh, essentially a business around him. And at the time, of it course. was like, are you a branded house or a house of brands. So is it going to be all Rob Deerdick brands or is it Rob Deerdick that has a bunch of brands underneath him? You know, and for me, I was like, well, I'm a branded house of brands, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I have some Rob Deerdick stuff and then I uh, create other, other brand stuff. But I still had no idea how they were valuing me, what what the entire uh, process of of what does pre money and post money and and e even back then I still didn't even think through the lens of that hey they're actually just managing money and that they need to get a return on this money and that they're going to have to sell half of me within a ten year time horizon <laughs> to create a return I didn't even I couldn't even look at that I still looked at it from that narrow lens of they're going to help me reach the success uh, that I needed to reach and. And of course, when they did the diligence on me, it was brutal for me because right. I just saw how disorganized and how how truly, um, you know, like unsophisticated my entire team was around me and how much I really didn't even understand any of the questions they were asking. But don't you, I'm not a celebrity, I'm not part of this world, but I mean, the celebrities I interact with, they usually have a business manager or some kind of business mentor or an accountant who's kind yeah. of plugged in. Didn't you, did you have anybody like that in your life? I had them all. Okay. And I bet if you went to most of those celebrities and yeah. did complete diligence on their structure and how they're running their business, how they, they would it. have the same feeling. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because yeah. those business managers and 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 these different people and and they're they're in it for their own sort of um, motive, if you will, based off of their alignment. Of course, right? Some people were just aligned to top dollar. It, it is what it is. They're not worried about the spending. Yeah. Right. Then a lot of the business managements that oversee a celebrity, what are they in it for? They're in it for a monthly retainer. So like, hey, they're going to be try to do as much as they can, but it's your choice to spend your money and and wherever you want. That's your buddy who's starting a company. You want to invest the money with it? Hey, go I'm for getting it. paid anyway yeah, every month. Getting, Who cares? I'm 25,000 a month. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I just I, like just live know your that, life, you know, and, and so to to me, um, you know, I, I think it, it at least it, it for me was that uh, that awakening, if you will, that you need to stop like just going so hard thinking that it's all going to work out and you have got to take the time to design what do you want to actually do what do you want to actually become what type of life do you actually want well before we even get there to interrupt so what happens to the deal they do their deal 
due diligence, they find out you're disorganized, that everything's a mess. Do they still invest in you or do they pull it off the table? Like what and, happened? And so, you know, and, and to this day, I keep the presentation that they gave to me on October 13th of 2012 uh, <laughs> in my office uh, because, you know, initially they uh, were going to um, value me at a hundred million dollars. Okay. Give me fifty million dollars, and then I would take thirty, and then twenty would go in to grow the company. Okay. And by the time they had got through to the diligence and presented me the offer, it was essentially a, a loan <laughs> of seven and a half million dollars at like a 16 percent interest rate <laughs> that i had to pay back in four years that i had to go on like a five hundred thousand dollar salary and that year i had made like you know 14 million dollars that year and like it was and we don't think you're investable now <laughs> uh you're basically uninvestable but we're willing to loan you money own a piece of you for life for loaning you money. Oh, well, they still they were still going to own a piece of own you? Own a piece of me for life. I Just for say, making a loan? For the loan, they got like 17% of everything I did for life. Then they had the right to acquire up to 51% once they helped me create the value. 50, 51% of you, Rob Deerdick? Everything that I do for the rest of my life. Yeah. And, 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 and there's been so many times that I've been through these interesting crossroads. That was because, probably the best thing that ever happened to you but, looking back. But look, of course it is looking back now. But think of how crazy it would have been if they'd have been like, hey, we can't. We'll give you 20 million. Like, uh, but, you you know, we still have the right to own half. I, it would have been a different game. Yeah. It, it's still, I still would have gone on to regret it. And it would have been like absolute chaos and been t terrible for me. You know, I was given the greatest gift by them, like, like giving me the awareness of not, not only are you not the business person you think you are, but ultimately it went all the way back down to like, I'm not even happy. You know, and it's like, I don't want to just do the next thing. I want to figure out how to create an amazing life. What do I want out of life? And how does business fit into that? How does, wow. how does the brands that I want to create fit into that? How does like my entire way of being become one rather than looking at it through just business all these years? Um, because I didn't know. I did so many things. And back then I would say like, you know, the awakening was if you have the ability uh, to do anything and you do everything, you end up standing for nothing. And that's almost kind of where I was, where I was just like, you know, do, going a million different directions, continually highs and lows and just, you know, is it skateboarding in leagues, is it business, is it entrepreneur, is it television, is it, you know, it's like cartoons, like I, all these different things um, that were just like leaving me on the razor's edge of just constantly highs and lows. And what happens in that reactive state, you spend half of your time wishing you didn't do any of it. <laughs> and then you spend the other half giving it all you got, believing it again, got to keep pushing, can't stop now. Shouldn't do any of this. I, why am I even doing like, why I shouldn't even do, I should like just do one thing overcorrect. I'm only going to run my league. I'm only going to run. I'm not going to do TV anymore. Oh, well, that doesn't make sense. You got You got to think about this. I'm the number is so astronomical. You know, it, I, I'm, it, it's hard to like, quite wrap my head around but there was a point in that era where like i just looked at tv as like i just don't even want to do tv anymore it see it's just taking too much energy and time i want to focus on business business is what i truly care about compared to to how i ended up using the leverage that i have that is tv to create like one of the biggest television shows in history from a point where i was right on the edge of just stopping doing it because my whole life was in such chaos that i was continuously getting overwhelmed and over capacity my mind collapsing in trying overreact i shouldn't do this i do i should simplify all these things you could i couldn't think clearly which would have again pushed me to make a really bad decision that I would have went on to regret but luckily I saved it just in time and then began to build from a place of balance then got better and better at being balanced over time got clearer and clearer more organized more intentional but just pause on that real expand. quick yeah. let's go back to 
they pull the deal. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna loan you money. Uh, you know, we still want a little piece of you. All that. First of all, me mm-hmm. and people, everybody watching this or listening to this would go, those guys, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to show them I'm not mm-hmm. taking their deal and I'm going to just grind and I'm going to work harder and learn more about business and I'm going to show them. Yeah. And it would be just like you said, the chaos. Yeah. It yeah. would be, yeah. I'm just going to focus on the skate league. Oh no, f- the skate league. I want to do a cartoon. Not f- yeah. The cartoon TV is really where it's at. Yeah. Wait, I want to build brands. And then like you said before, it's just all chaos. That's what I, I would do. That's yeah. what you would do. I think that's what most people would do. You're you, wired. Listen to me. You need to change you. <laughs> I'm here to learn and no, change, yeah, my you friend. You need to change you right now. And all of you. <laughs> all even of prescribe us. to that. It's funny because even as you said it. Yeah. Like, I just think of like, man, is that the worst like move you could make? Of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, it, and you would think that that was the innate like, hey, I want to show you. And it, it, I was humbled. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I, everybody, there's always the great story of, of, you know, like the humbling that, that made you rethink or at least expand your mind into understanding how much you need to learn to actually be the person you want to be. I think, I think the great benefit of it is I was exposed to the potential and I began to learn and have a greater understanding of how to create value in a business and what what venture the potential of venture could be and in business building and what I could potentially create but I didn't look at it as like I'm going to show you mm-hmm. I looked at it as they were all great relationships okay right because it was a it was a great relationship it was even the people involved uh were, were all like you know great people that were super influential that I learned a lot in the process I looked at it less of I'm going to show you as like hey I'm not going to take this deal I'm, I've got too much that I've got to go figure out on my own. What I want to do is go figure out, um, you know, how to build this and organize this business, create some value. Then when I come back to you, I'm going to show you how we can create a return together. Right. I think that's like what I learned along the process. I learned of who and how, um, what they were actually trying to do. And it made sense to me finally, like, because I never looked at business as from this idea of starting with what's your return goal and then building a strategy to lead towards that return. In the past, I just would create things yeah. and hope that they were profitable and successful. I never thought about like the, this idea of deciding you want to sell something and create a return. And so I was very grateful for that. And I really looked at back then that I was going to just take a couple years to organize it and go back to them and then do the deal again. Only now I'd be doing it from a place that made sense where we would go create a ton of money and value and a big return with each other is what I thought the initial um, energy would come from. But it was never a like... It, it, it's I, a mature and healthy way to look at the situation. Yeah, and, and because you got to think about it. It was... I had been going through the chaos for so long, I thought this was the answer. And then when it was like, nope, this is actually all the questions <laughs> that you have to like figure out if you really wanna become this, this group is not going to answer them for you. They are not going to save you. You have to save yourself. You have to create their, yourself. They're not going to create you. And, and I think that I was humbled and that became more the mission. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and versus this sort of idea of anger, because I knew that didn't work. I knew it was time for a strategic approach, not a will yourself there approach again. You so know? we, I mean, so this is a, a big turning point of your life. And we started this off talking about time optimization and tracking yeah. everything and having all these systems in place and stuff. But that, I was listening to some of your podcasts. Everyone check out the podcast too. I love it. So many good lessons in there. Just a great philosophy to learn from. And you were talking, I don't know if you were talking to somebody or just talking out loud where you're saying like version one of products suck Mm -hmm. and don't expect to be the iPhone 13 if you haven't figured out the iPod shuffle yet. Right. (laughs) Okay. So like, it sounds like Rob here is at iPod shuffle level, like in this moment, what did that first version, what did Rob, you know, 1.0 look like at that time? Yeah. I I mean, look, the, the, the shuffle version was, (laughs) you know, 
just a mess. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look, the shuffle version still couldn't even play music. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, I I had this base of, of sort of clarity in the sense of um, that I really liked this, the, the, the understanding of the venture side, right? Where it was like, oh, I like this where you you're moving with intention of like you decide you want to build something to sell it at a specific price. So I began to look at it more from the business lens. I looked at like, I need to learn everything about business. Like I knew I didn't understand the financial side of the business, the operational side, all these things they were asking me. So my first intent was just to hire a consultant Okay. That would basically design a process for me on how I would build businesses and so that I could learn every single aspect of how to build, create, and operate a business from beginning to end. So right? where do you find that person? I just started Googling. I just started Googling and I found a, a consultancy group in Los Angeles and the founder had written the book, Start at the End, and which was essentially a business book that... Um, was no matter what type of business that you are going to create, decide what you want the outcome of the business to be, then build your plan backwards to get there. Now, first of all, what's his name? Because there's three, after I heard you mention this, I I looked on Amazon, there's three books with yeah, the same name. Yeah, so no, which one's yeah, his? It's, he's the founder of Grow Think. And, okay. And so I'm, yeah, there's a couple other ones. Like, it's funny, like somebody heard I'm me like, talk like, which one am I talking about? And then had like a, <laughs> one of the other writers on said, yeah, I had the writer, like of a name I didn't recognize, you know. <laughs> You know, again, it's but what it was so like mind blowing was I just never even contemplated that as a concept because it was just like it's always idea driven. It's never outcome driven because you're a creative guy That's at it. heart. It's it. And, and then I had so much success doing that. Right. And so when you begin to look at it through that lens, it was so profound of it was simple. It's not like I had to read the whole book. It's like literally the first like <laughs> 90 like like, you know, like 500 words, you know what I mean? It's like a page and a half, okay. you know what I mean? And it's like, man, that, it was so relevant to me. But then I found a, a another group um, out of uh, Seattle that was another consultant group called Arrive, who like when I laid out what I was trying to achieve, he just flew straight down uh, the great Christopher Smith and like literally laid out like his entire way of what, how he would help me build the entire process, how he'd walk me through a discovery process of my own entrepreneurship and what I know about business in order to create a strategy and an, an overall vision for not only, um, my sort of, you know, business creation going forward, but then how did Rob the brand integrate into that? And then we, you know, spent, you know, probably a half a year and he finally presented like a literally like a 200 page doc that starts with a business plan of the entire vision and then how we would build a business, every single business all the way through every single time. Was that Deer Deck Machine? Is and, that and that was initially at the time it was the Deer Deck group, but it was basically now uh, the foundation of the Deer Deck Machine. Right? Okay. And, and then I hired this brilliant um uh, you know, a uh, brand director that, that, uh, and brand manager that really understood the systemization on the brand side. And then I basically connected all aspects of brand and marketing creating with operations and financing into one that would become the Deer Deck machine. Now, when you talk about business, I mean, these are common business principles, right? When sure. you're talking about building systems and, you know, putting those in place, but it seems like you went all in, I mean, all in, not only in business, but you're like, you're applying these now to your personal life. So did you, when you're sitting down and looking at this, like, okay, I want to build these businesses and stuff. Did you ha have like another sheet on the whiteboard that said, okay, personally, this is kind of the life I want to live. And these are systems I need to kind of make it all happen. Yeah. And so how the transition happened was really seamlessly where it was <laughs> in the process of creating um, the operational side of the business, like they had presented me the ROC, which was the rhythm of company, which is what essentially is a year long calendar that shows that there is this rhythm that occurs when you operate a business. You have to do a certain amount of weekly financial or monthly financial meetings. You have weekly stand up meetings. You have like uh, through the holidays, like you have the holiday breaks. It showed like the entire rhythm of huh. all the things that would go into the Deer Deck machine as a business. And I'm like, 
I'm like, wow, I need this for my whole life. <laughs> I'm like, if you did, if I did one of these for my life and then overlapped it with my business, that's the rhythm of my existence. And that essentially became the beginning of me really looking at how my time usage and how actual life and the way that life flows and all the sort of systems that go into my life um, and business actually blended together to make up everything. And in that same uh, process, so after he uh, had finished doing uh, building out that that core structure that would become the machine, then I hired him to just build my life version. <laughs> Right. And same guy. That's it. Yeah. Same group. Right. Okay. And 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 that's when he really introduced this idea wow. of like you should use qualitative data to give you quantitative insights in right? your life. In in my life. And that's when we who ended does up, that? First of all, who, and, no and, one does but, that. But but again, it's so powerful, right? And and to me, it was so much more powerful than I could have ever imagined because it really helped accelerate my evolution and optimization. Because if you think about it, if you start asking yourself every single day, zero to 10, how you feel about your life, your work and your health, you have this aggregate number that shows the quality of your life. And you do that every morning? Every single day. Okay. And But when you do it early on, and you are low, right? You 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 have a low number on your your uh, for your work or your life, like you kind of make a mental note of what it is, and then you do it every day, and the same thing pops up a couple times, same person pops up a couple times, you know, like okay, I have that's what I have to change, and now you're optimizing your life towards feeling better and better and better. So I have done this every day since 2015. Oh, wow. So I could show you in numbers the quality of life and happiness that I have in pure data from tracking just how I feel about life, work, and health over a seven-year period. Now, you know? logistically, how do you do that? Is there an app you use? Do yeah, you like, pen like, and paper? Like, how do you I track just, it? I put it into the calendar. Okay. Right? And so I had it in a calendar, in my Google calendar for years. And then I eventually uh, was speaking about it at this uh, at this event. And a, a programmer reached out to me and said, hey, I could write a script to pull it out of your Google calendar and put it into, uh, in, into a spreadsheet. And it was mind blowing. Because then you see the trends and then you That's see, so cool. you know, then you begin to see like, oh, like the times a year where you're higher and lower. And then, then I began to track like my core health uh, balance stuff, which is, did I get up at five? Did I brain train? Did I work out? Did I, uh, eat clean? Did I not drink, um, all of these different sort of health numbers. And then when I began to see those in an aggregate, then it began to be clear that like, man, the more focused you are on your health side of things, the higher quality of life you're living the higher qualitative numbers you're getting, which is a direct correlation of a higher quality of life. It, it just became so clear to me the importance of continue to, to track those numbers and then stay committed and disciplined on the stuff you can quantify. Did you do it? Yes or no. And gamifying it by tracking it every day and then it gets a percentage. Now you're playing the game of setting goals of, hey, I want to do that 80% of each month and that should get my qualitative score over 20 a month a, com a com combination of the three scores which gets technical now yeah yeah but at the end of the day i was given that insight and i had already turned it into a way of life and habit and it's intuitive i just track it every i don't even think about it, it takes yeah. me a few minutes to do it and then i look at the dashboards on an ongoing basis now at this level you know i haven't not done Getting up at five, brain trained, meditate. What's brain God, train? I just use a an app to brain train. And now I brain train every day and then I qualitatively judge how sharp I feel <laughs> so that I can begin to have insight into like what is what is calibrating a really sharp mind. Like is if it, I sleep more, my score is higher, yep. then and there's so a correlation. Then I track my sleep score, I trap my readiness score, I trap uh track um you know, did you get up at five, brain train, meditate, gym, supplements? Did you not drink? Did you eat in a nine hour window and eat two meals, no snack, no sugar, no alcohol? And I 
have done that every single day so far this year. So for the rest of us who are not at Yoda level like you yeah. yet, what are some things, three things we should be tracking every day? I, look, I, I, how would, how I, would you I, start? Look, I, it, like it has to be measurable and matter to you. Okay. You know, so and, it's and different for everybody. It, it is. I do think fundamentally, if you just track every day, how do I feel about my life? Zero to 10. Okay. And five being neutral and four being half empty where you wish you didn't have the job you had and you hate your couch and six being hopeful and like seeing it half full, right? Okay. It's this binary. When you see the world half full, you're hopeful and excited about the future. When you see it half empty, you're dwelling in the past or worrying about the future or, or wishing you didn't have all these things or dwelling. That's where the negative mindset sits when you feel half empty. If you just monitor like how often you end up in that half empty, mm -hmm. that simple practice, and then then begin to see what are the things that keep pulling you down and begin to make that change, your entire life will change. You know what I mean? And then you'll begin to see stuff inside there that are like, oh, it's money or something that always bothers me in my uh, about my life. OK, then then you know that you've got to create a system uh, to, to begin to save money and learn about investing or at least create some sort of process to alleviate the pressure that money is putting on you. Begin to develop a new skill for a new job, whatever it is. If it's the way that you feel about yourself, the, the easiest and cleanest thing in the world to do is is weigh yourself and and then just set a goal on what you'd like to get to and then it informs the strategy of hey i'm gonna eat this uh for five days a week whatever it is like begin, begin with yeah, the end in mind yeah like constantly looking at these measurable things that will you know will make your life happier and and then committing to them one at a time and then continually to do that on an ongoing basis and add those together i that's the foundational side of getting to a a neutral place in your existence you know what i mean so when you do get pulled low it's isolated something that you're out of you have no control over these different sort of things that eventually you want to create systems that even defend you from that you know you want to eventually get to a place where you have complete control over your reality the things that are integrated into your reality your job your relationship these different things that you have partial control over mm -hmm. that you have great systems to ensure the quality of of your job your relationship and then defend yourself wholly from the things you have no control over your company going out of business your the economy collapsing you know all these different sort of things something someone slams into your car you want to have as much defense is inside the world you have complete control over designed in a way that amplifies the things you have partial control over and defends you from the things you don't have control over. That's how you can build a truly happy life um, in a controlled reality, you know. So we we checked off a couple boxes. Now talk about beginning with end in mind that we can apply to our personal life. It sounds kind of like or it's kind of goal setting, kind of manifestation. Yeah. Like how how would you how would you apply it to the person watching? Regular person's got a regular I, job, wants more money, wants to be happier. You gotta what, define it. Go ahead. You gotta define it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what do you want your life to be? Okay. You know what I mean? Like you have to like like to me what I love about life design through time design, it kind if you look at like how would you spend every day, every week, every month, every year if you could. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, OK, well, man, I would like to just work these hours so I could play tennis in the afternoons on Tuesdays and <sighs> see my kids on this and go to soccer on that. And on the weekends, I'd like to, you know, whatever it is, that's now like sort of your your goal of what your structure of your ideal life is. Yeah. And then now it's like, what are the strategies and 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 things you need to, to implement to ever get there. Is it a new job? Yeah. Is it just like sacrificing no longer staying up to 11 watching Netflix so you can now uh, get up earlier and get more things done and work out and whatever it may be? It, it really ends up being how would your ideal life look on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. That's your real goal, yep. right? When, when we think about, oh, if I had all the money in the world, what would I do, right? It's like, whatever that map out, that's it. And now you build a pathway to get there because it, it's, 
it's it's that age old idea of like once you tell the universe where you want to go mm-hmm. and begin to make the progress, then the universe will begin to provide you the answers and the resources um, that you didn't even know you needed to help get you there. And it, people rarely define where they want to go. Yep. You know what I mean? They just keep pushing in all aspects of their life and then hope one day they'll be able to find balance rather than designing um, what would be their ideal version of life. Then creating a strategy to incrementally grow there. You know? I think what um, uh, I struggle with this for 20 years, I think most people struggle with is, I don't know where I want to go. Like for me personally, I had boring sales jobs that I hated mm-hmm. that were good money. And I didn't know kind of what I wanted to do or what I was really good at. And to answer your question, what would I do if I had all the money in the world? I would fucking do this. Right. <laughs> I would sit down with Rob Deerdeck today. And then next Wednesday, I would sit down with somebody else interesting and just talk about cool stuff. Yeah. And that's what I would do. But it took me 25 years to figure that out. And then it took me once I decided that's what I want to do. It took me five years to really get there. Yeah. But but think about how you feel today. It's amazing. Think about how you feel today compared to two years ago. Oh, my. I was selling kitchen equipment to grocery stores. You, were, you think I gave a f- about selling a to dishwasher to Whole Foods? Listen to me. You were selling. <laughs> to Whole Foods. Yes. You understand? Like, and, and that's the perfect example. And now of I'm it. here. And, and think about it. You started like you you knew that maybe you couldn't exactly define, but you knew five years ago when you started the process of uh, interviewing people and writing and creating the content that you wanted to, if your your ideal life yeah. would be transitioning out of your day to day so you could do this full time. But, but would it go back 10 years? I didn't know anyone who even did this. I didn't even know. This wasn't even in my brain as a thought. Right. So what do, what are the people watching doing who go, I got the job that I hate, but no, I don't know no, what no, no. I want to do. You tell them. What do because you mean? Because you did it. Yeah. You did it. I guess. For, you did it. It, and, 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 and it was not, trying. Not, 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 to fi- cut you, not to go tell ahead. you to tell them and then cut you off again. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> let me talk, them. Rob. You tell them. Right, no, no. <laughs> let me tell them what you did. But, but you're a perfect example of it. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's like you don't necessarily have to know it exactly. But when you finally figure it out, then you go. Right. And you, you allow, go hard. That's it. Like you allow, you keep, but what you, what, what, what you didn't do was allow yourself to not be dabbling and, and looking at where the uh, opportunity to transition out of what you knew was not your destiny to do for the rest of your life. If you did not take those steps to begin to, to dabble and understand and trial and error and then begin to see like the sparks of something that could become a flame, you would be at Whole Foods right now. <laughs> Talking like, about a dishwasher. Talking about the latest dishwasher. I'm telling you guys right now, I'm telling you right now, you're going to save seven to 15 minutes per day on loading. Who it's gives It's loading, a guys. F- you know, but, yeah. but I- That I would, was my day. And, and, and I would tell you as it relates to, I refer to it to perpetually evolving into my limitless potential. Okay. Because I'm, I- as I continue to do all of these things, I am in this perpetual state of trial and error and evolving and growing and building my next stage. The same way that like, I didn't start talking about um, entrepreneurialism and the depth of what I'm doing with the Deer Deck Machine until I sold $450 million worth of companies. I didn't, I didn't say like, oh, I'm a celebrity starting a venture studio. By the time I brought out and started talking about like the, my process I had sold six companies for $450 million and it was beneath the radar of the world because I was just preparing and getting to this stage. And even as I have had the incredible success and evolved, I'm continuing to evolve. And now it's like, no, I want to combine it all into transitioning to philosophy content and do a book and build a software so people can actually do what I've done uh, in a much more intuitive and easy way. But you're back to what is somebody do that has a job that they don't like They have to start using the time that they have to exploring, building new skills, new value in something that they know that they would enjoy more to try to get there. Because you now, five years later from where you started, like in your mind when you started, you were like, I hope I can transition with this in like a year. 
Yeah. You know, and like, and then at two year, years, at <laughs> year three, you're like, I don't know. I'm, it's like, I don't know if it's ever going to, but it's yeah. at year five and you did it. Yeah. You're like, that was really short. Yeah. You're like, five, it doesn't actually seem that long. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, and to me, when I think about, you know, it being a decade since that 360 deal, it's not a matter of the fact that I've gone on to make, I was basically broke, dead even uh, back then. And I now have hundreds of millions of dollars, right? <laughs> it's crazy to and say. It's the, like, it, and it's like, even when I say like, you know, I was like saying today where I have a financial model that models out my path to a billionaire, right? And so to me, it's not a question of if I become a billionaire. It's not, it's not I was joking that the only way it's possible is if aliens, uh, an asteroid, or creatively, I said, if somehow the earth loses oxygen. Um, but I understand money at such a degree. I've grown into to, to the depth of knowledge and understanding and planning and clarity. And I have got to the place where I have the ability uh, to call and ask for and understand a financial model to the year 2050 because I find it interesting and amazing. And I did a super conservative path to a billionaire that I know is impossible not to happen. Now, I have more than, uh, you know, 10 or 15 ideas that are going to accelerate that process and bring it down to, to you know, a minimal amount of years. And but the conservative, simple, fully clear plan, if I just, you know, practice the traditional 70, 20, uh, 7 to 10 percent doubling your money every, um, you know, 7 to 10 years, I'm going to easily do it with the way that I have a conservative portfolio. And and even the way that I've designed the portfolio of being, you know, and, and this isn't even my growth portfolio of having a 80 percent um, tax efficient real estate portfolio and 20 percent liquid bonds ETF dividends and money market account, liquid uh, cash producing assets, even the cash that's produced by uh, the portfolio allows me to do whatever for the for the rest of my life. So I have a path, a clear path and understanding financially of how I will easily become a billionaire and generate an immense amount of cash from not even understanding having three, fi like, like a decade earlier, like having three financial advisors where I had no money left in the account because the accounts were doing so poorly. I had no idea what it was even invested in and had no, and I was getting feed to death and had no idea, had no even strategy of even how to grow money in any way, shape or form. But that's a decade right now. Yeah. Now it feels like it was yesterday, you know, and, and that's where I go to this idea of like where you, you want to continually define the things that that you want to achieve. And when you do it, it's going to feel like 10, 15, 20 years. Oh, it's going to take so long. But as you incrementally grow towards it, then you begin to learn more. You expand into it. You see other things are presented to you that help accelerate that. The universe uh, brings you the opportunities that changes the job, that allows it to happen, that grow you towards that, that, that what was this going to be a lifetime goal uh, in a much more shorter amount of time. So, you know, again, back to the idea of, what does the person do that has the job that they hate what they're doing and how do they make the change to get that life? It starts with designing it. And if not, it starts with trial and error until you find something that feels right and then jump into it and go for it and then really lock in on how to get there because you will, it will be worth it even if it takes longer than the time you thought that it would. Failure is underrated. And you asked me before how I get here. I failed at a million things. I tried everything. Hey, maybe I want to be part of this startup and, you know, run sales for them and I'll do that on the side. Actually, I fucking hate that. <laughs> you know, yeah. no one's getting paid. I hate, you know, there's no money, you know, there's too much pressure, blah, blah. I didn't like that. Hey, let's try this thing over here. Try that. So for me, and it sounds like your story is the same hey, thing, is just keep trying. Hey, but listen, listen to what you And you, you narrow said. your search. Listen to what you said. What? Because even when you design your time and your life, you're, you want to design it around energy. Yeah. You always want to design around energy. When you think about doing it, does it make you excited? And do you feel energized by it? Okay. Right. And the problem is, is we 
put that energy on things we don't have an understanding of. What do you mean? Meaning you were like, I'm going to do sales in the startup and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> when you thought about it, you were like, what? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Forget about this corporate thing. I'm in the startup world. I'm going to get a little <laughs> bit of equity. I'm going to help grow it. I'm going to be a part of it. Then I'm going to get paid on the way out. And then when you actually get into it, it's like, what? Like it's chaos. Like nobody wants this product. Like, like they don't even understand the marketing. They don't, their supply chain's a mess. Like I keep trying to sell it to people. Nobody wants it. Like the, the market, there's not even a market for this. Like, because you weren't like doing 100%. the diligence of that side of it. You were focused on how amazing it would feel if you were a successful salesperson yep. at a successful startup. Yep. And that's what we tend to do yeah. as, as tie the energy, especially to what we don't know. Because it's, it's the, and, and I deal with this, especially in business and entrepreneur founders at the highest level. They have grinded out and learned everything about their industry and they hate it. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, anybody in CPG is like low margin and like, <laughs> like high returns and trade costs. And then anybody in footwear is like, oh, sizes and inventory management. It's just a nightmare. <laughs> Every single person will that's an expert in their field will go down on why their particular industry is a nightmare because they all are hard. Yeah, But the guy who's coming from footwear is like, oh man, if I could just get into software yep. where it's like, you don't have high to do margins, oh, huge and yeah. margin and like, you don't have inventory, yep. and, but they don't know a single thing about customer acquisition. And then like, especially in the CPG space, right? There's people that came from, uh, you know, consumer products and they're in the retail space and you get beat up by retailers and returns and like, you know, giving up margin and all this stuff stuff they think the gold is in direct to consumer the gold's in direct to consumer and then they get to direct to consumer and they can't understand oh, we're doing facebook ads what's a row ads i don't even get this like it, it is it is because we have a tendency to like think that the grass is greener especially in business and in jobs and in life and, and, and in life in general and it's it's this idea that that uh, you know you, the more that you can learn about something before you go and do it and then go and go and do it with the intent of like am i going to like it there are so many times that I start things and then it's like, just don't like it. Don't think I want to do it, you know? And, and for me, especially since I'm so hop, highly optimized from a time and energy standpoint, everything is hard in the beginning. So for me, it's like, how quickly can I drive it to automation? And then when I get it to automation, where I've now reduced the effort and it's an organized process, now is it performing and do I like it? You know, when I first did my podcast, it was like, you know, I'm going to all dance with the devil on this. I want to be able to create a platform where my business voice can be heard. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't go out and try to go get a podcast deal because I didn't even know if I'd even want to do it. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I just wanted to talk, uh, uh, have the show be about me and my founders. So it's just us talking about building companies together. You will hear my voice as it relates to how I look at building business. It'll be promoting my founders and we'll be talking about the companies that we're partners in on an ongoing basis became too difficult right out the gate why because it was like i like it, i didn't want to talk too inside about the business right you can't reveal too much as you're going yeah you can't actually talk about the real-time problems it becomes problematic and then now <laughs> it's like ah, it's just it takes a lot to try to produce it and figure out what and now it's taking all this time i gotta coordinate all this stuff it's not feeling right then i'm like okay i started asking for video submissions on on the website instead of pitch decks right and so okay then i'll bring those those people that pitch ideas on and give them advice right and then it's like as i'm beginning to to give advice it's like man people love hearing you hearing your philosophy yeah then it's like all right let me start leading with philosophy and and it became easier to produce and the philosophy i was getting more energy and more excited out of then it was like well it's kind of difficult prepping and dealing with like these different entrepreneurs to do the show uh, um, if I'm going to do this, like maybe I should just try it with just philosophy and then boom, uh, the entire uh, show really gets cooking now. And that's what got me excited yeah. was that content. Yeah, and, but, but again, for me as someone feeling my way through it, 
I was checking for energy and time, you know, and trying and different that's things. It, that's it. Yep. And, and, and I very well could have stopped it. There, there's many a times early on in the process of, of building companies over the last couple of years that I just stopped when it was like, it's too difficult. Like I can just see how much they don't understand. And in this diligence process of beginning to build on three companies, I debted midway through the process of, of, um, you know, basically committing to build it, right? Since I build from the idea stage rather than invest. So you kind of go through a much more intimate process and you really understand how well somebody really knows business when you're trying to build a business holistically with them and then the financial modeling to support that. And, and it's an energy game. And when you're just, every meeting now becomes more like you, you're, you're, you're microing everything and it becoming more difficult. I just did it. I just did it. I, I, I now in my life push everything through that energy lens, uh, which gives you the ability to understand how to almost quickly fail or micro fail along the way as you're deciding if you want to do something. You know what I mean? Now, one more thing, too, because we're almost out of time is I want to talk processes, too, real quick, is I'm just fascinated just in your personal life, how these processes, Friday night, well, tonight's Friday, right? We do pizza night, you do pasta night on Friday, it sounds like, right? You got certain things in place with your wife. You sit down with her, go over calendars, you know, one day a week and stuff. Like, how did that evolve? And what can we what can we learn from kind of your experience with putting the right processes in place, whether it's in business or your personal life? Yeah. And again, it's why I don't look at them separate at all. You said, yeah, exactly. It's all the same thing. It's just like, it is your life. Like, you know, I implore to people of like, when you design a business, design your life at the same time. So if you have success in business, you have success in life, right? So you don't just think you're going to build the business and be successful, then you'll have success in life. And and look, for me, it's always been uh, about um, living a balanced and harmonious, complete existence. And, and the relationship with my wife sits at the very top. My time with my family sits at the very top. And so that's an ongoing process. Your wife is evolving and changing. You're evolving and changing. Your kids are growing, evolving and changing. Their wants, needs, school, sports, all these things are continually changing. And so for me, you know, my commitment to to the family and the wife is, you know, I you know, I joke where people are like always talk about a date night. And to me, it's like every bit of the entire day requires continual communication and optimization. And any time that there's friction, that you identify that friction and what can you put into place to eliminate it. And 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 for me over the years, and it's just nonstop on an ongoing basis. And so, you know, when, when you think about integrating uh, each other's lives and fully understanding each other's lives, it's it's beyond just having access to a calendar. You know what I mean? It is it is understanding every single aspect. And so for me, you know, it is email every day with every single thing that I'm doing with a sweet love quote that I now have chat GPT generate for me uh, to get a little bit more efficient. Um, you know, I'm... You know, it is like, you know, picking the kids up and taking the kids to school with her and having that time each day. It's bringing her a coffee. You know, I get up, you know, at, at between three, three thirty and, and five every day. And then I ask her when she wants to get up and then she will give me a time. And then I bring a coffee to her. So she has the coffee on the weekends, get up and take her to Starbucks. You know, we do breakfast date on Thursdays in the morning. So it's not just evening dates and Wednesday night, movie night and Friday night pop pasta night and Sunday night uh, pasta and we take the kids or sushi. We take the kids to karate on Sundays and gymnastics on Wednesday or Saturdays. It's like we're in this complete rhythm. And then when we do our complete family get together, uh, it is with all of our assistants. And then we go through every single aspect of everything going on in the entire family. So, our from, entire so the kids karate lesson to them, that's the most important thing they got going on. So that's important to you guys too. That's it. That's it. But everything in there. Everything life. is. We've yeah. never not gone to a pediatrician together. We've mm-hmm. never not gone to a school night together. The entire life is designed around spending time with each other in the family. And then you work in between all of that. And then the 
only way to really be able to have this level of output is to be highly efficient in the hours that you work. Because you got to think last month of March, I worked 22% of my time. A regular nine to five, 40 hour a week is like 27% of someone's life. Okay. You know what I mean? That's how few hours that I actually worked in the month of March. And, but again, you know, that's because my wife was giving up her title as Miss Queen of the World. And so we all flew to New York for her to give up her title and got all gold sport coats to like be there <laughs> to support her. And then, you know, we went to Bora Bora for vacation for spring break and uh, went to Vegas for Taylor Swift. So because she's a Swifty and I had to don a pink leather hoodie and a, and a pink leather jacket and get a pink Hummer to go see Taylor Swift. You know, it's it's living life to the fullest that's and Cool. putting the family as a priority and continual communication on all aspects of who we are and and what our lives are and then constantly finding new systems to implement to reduce the friction that may pop up uh, or other things that happen inside the relationship or inside our lives it is in and if you think about if you pull back and now do that to every part of your life where you're just constantly looking at how can it be more efficient higher energy and higher quality as you continue to change the world continues to change and everybody's changing around you it's this perpetual game and the difference is you're living in in this perpetual state of what I call magnetic energy, where you're just radiating on an ongoing basis and continually evolving into a better future while experiencing an incredible present. That is really what it's all about. And when you do that consistently, you're just happy. Bro, I have you a tattoo. I mean? Where is it? Uh, right here. Kaizen. It's a Japanese manufacturing term that I always love. It just means continuous improvement. That's it. Just little That's bit it. better every man. time man Just sounds a little, a little bit. german but i love it you know what i'm saying <laughs> i don't want to say kaizen but it sounds a little german uh but i really love that because that's really that's what, what it's it all is. about that's really what it is and in and, and for me it's you want to increase the probability of a better future experience and you have to continually optimize towards how that happens because make no mistake however you feel in this exact moment today is based off of every decision that you made in the past. Every choice that you made, if you're overwhelmed because you tried to do too much, like, and you weren't thoughtful or intentional about your own capacity, uh, you got short with someone, you you had three bad nights of sleep because you were staying up late, and now you got in a fight with your wife over something dumb, like, however you feel in this exact moment is based off of every single one of those decisions. So you are trying to optimize towards a highly, highly, um, you know, high quality existence in the presence that's continually creating a better future. And then you do that on an ongoing basis. You are in awe of life because you live with that depth of intentionality. You control reality and you predict the future. It is your ability to learn it. You just have to continually do it by committing to Kaizen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now listen, where can we get more of this? I mean, this is one of my favorite conversations I've had in a long time. Where can we get more of this content from Rob? Yeah, I mean, look. The this, podcast? This, where else this, can we get this? It, look, it, for people that are going to watch this online, we are inside the studio where it even happens. <laughs> uh, it is not just the Tom <laughs> no, Ward no, show. No, no, no. It is also built with Rob. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look, it is. I, I, I really, if you got to think about the, what the podcast is for me, um, is it is it is the it is me working through how to articulate the philosophy that I am living, that I will have, I am sharing with others that that would like to hear the insight and the examples to apply it to their own lives. Where ultimately I want to codify it into a true practice and then have the software to support it because I really believe uh, when you begin to see yourself as these integrated systems that integrate into into bigger systems systems that make up your reality and if you learn to control them and design them with intention and keep them in a harmonious state you will find heaven on earth and, and so my my mission is just to continue to inspire people to understand it gain the awareness and know that you grow and evolve into that over time you don't there is no quick fix to becoming the best version of yourself it is work that you just have to do on an ongoing basis is this i mean because you can look at life as a vc as investment 
return, you know, exit, you know, that's kind of how you can mm -hmm. look at life. And that's, I'm sure how you look at a lot of your businesses. Is this the kind of quote unquote business that you want to live beyond you? That there's no exit in five years from what you just described, the software and the three series book you're working on. Is this kind of the mission of this is going to be bigger than just Rob Deerdeck? Yeah. And, and I mean, look, I think for me, I, I transitioned in 2020 from self-preservation to generational preservation. I began to see the world through what can I continue to create that lasts forever? And I look at Marcus Aurelius and meditations written, you know, 2000 years ago. The Stoics were bad. You know, and, and how they it's still relevant today. It's it's I, you know, I have a friend of mine in, in a peer group who's like, you know, generation like 16 of a Japanese samurai warrior and how the core values and spirit of his, you know, great descendant is in him. Like I look at wanting to affect hundreds and hundreds of years of my family and create things that are built to last forever beyond me, not just creating the next thing that creates the next big return finally any books podcasts movies documentaries you recommend for people watching to just learn more and improve their lives i, I mean look I, I think everybody should you know listen or read the book karma uh an inner engineering from sad guru i think you know a lot of the uh, the person that wrote The Secret, there's a great book called Magic that she wrote that's really about the power of gratitude um, uh, that I think people should listen to because it's 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 this deeply essential cornerstone of true happiness. And, and it's an output of, of living this highly intentional and organized life. I don't practice gratitude. I'm overwhelmed with it <laughs> on an ongoing basis. You're just like, I can't even believe this is my life. Like that is what's possible with a, a life of great intention that you continually evolve into. But I think those specifically um, are two really, really uh, compelling fundamental uh, books, especially karma. Karma is really this idea of, of not karma in the sense that that we're sort of used to of like, you know, you, you, you get what you give, you know, type of thing, but it really breaks down, you know, how, how everything is truly connected and how every single decision and everything you do matters. I think we too often think that there's only a handful of things. If we just focus on a handful of important things, then then we'll be okay. How we, you do anything is how you do everything. That's it, you know, and everything matters and everything is fully integrated together. And there is an exchange between time, energy, and mind share of all of it. And so it is important that you begin to understand that and, and use every bit of you with intention to create a harmonious life. Right. Brother, I think it's a great note to end on. Thank you so much. This was one of my, and no disrespect to previous guests, but this is one of my favorite conversations I've had in a long time. Guys, if you liked it, thank you so much for watching or listening. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. New episodes every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Thanks, guys.